Coach Michael Don and Peter, how are you today? I'm good. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. Now, you're a hard worker, so I'm going to start with a, a real tough football question. Do you get a chance to enjoy Thanksgiving? Will you be home? Will you be eating turkey? Or is it at, at the job, working, studying film? No, I'll be up here. Really? Yeah, I'm boring. How about your poor family? What oh, are they going to do? Are you hungry? Uh, I think they're going out of town, so. You think? <laughs> yeah. Hold on, Adam, are you going We're home at all? Have you talked to your wife in weeks? <laughs> no, they're going out of town, so. It, this year was different than what it's been in the past, so. This, this is, I mean, I've said this all the time. This is not a normal job. I mean, you, you've got to be a little different to have this job. Yeah, this is the time of year where it gets a little, where... You know, we give we give the players that the afternoon to where we kind of switch the meetings around on Thursday, and kind of carry it on Friday. We we change things up a little bit, and the same thing with Christmas. It's just trying to keep guys focused for the game, but at the same time, let them enjoy Thanksgiving, Christmas Day, things like that. It's just you know sometimes teams do a really good job of being able to stay focused. Other times, it, it doesn't work out so well. Do you ever rethink your career choice when really you're giving away times that you know other people cherish? I mean, they work all year to get to Thanksgiving and Christmas, and you have to work your butt off. That's all right. I'd, I, I kind of like doing this. Okay. <laughs> all right, and you're doing a good job of it. Uh, three wins in a row. Uh, how does it feel? I mean, do you feel that there's a distinct difference from the team that was 1-7 and seven to the team that's won three in a row? I think it's it's obviously clicking a little better for us the last three weeks. I think this last game was probably our best game of complimentary football where all three phases did a good job of playing off each other. You know, guys executed exactly what we talked about on Wednesday of how we wanted to play this game. We knew the challenge we had going into the game, especially defensively against their offense. We knew what we needed to do a good job of on offense was possess the ball and make sure that when we got in the red zone we scored points and we needed to do it early and special teams did what we needed them to do with the return game and we got an explosive punt return which we were looking for and our defense did a great job of stopping the run is this what you envision this football team to be over the last three weeks yeah i think this is this is closer to what we thought we'd be we thought we'd be able to play like this maybe a little earlier than what we have but I think a lot of the moving pieces kind of kind of kind of push that back a little bit but I think the guys have done a great job sticking with everything that we've been trying to do the way they've practiced the way they've prepared they've never changed which has really helped especially the last three weeks I'm curious coach um past jet teams when you weren't here they'd win a game and they'd be strutting about and talking big and everything and this team seems to take a very business-like approach how do you stop them i mean you want them to feel good about themselves but how do you stop them from thinking too long term and not about this game coming up really i mean it's there's they've been so consistent when things weren't weren't going quite as well and they were doing a good job of resetting on Wednesday. They weren't letting one game affect the next. You know, it didn't always turn out the way we wanted to, but the preparation in the week heading into the game was, was the way it needed to be. And I think that has helped us, especially the last three weeks of win a game, go back to work, and just having that mindset, hey, zero and zero. We just need to be one and zero at the end of the week. And we just keep preaching that. The guy, I think the veterans on this team, the captains have done a great job of doing the same thing and, and just kind of making sure that's going through the locker room nonstop. You know, I think it's, you know, we're four and seven. So at the end of the day, we, we got a long ways to go. We got a lot of, a lot of ground to make up. So uh, I think our guys are going to be able to reset on Wednesday and, and focus on the task at hand. All right, and just getting Belmore involved, how did that develop? Because that was always the problem we talked to you earlier about where he'd get lost and just trying to find a way to get him more. How, how have you been able to get him more involved? Well, we were just trying to, you know, do some different things and, and see if we can get him really in space. I mean, that's the biggest thing, just trying to get him to where he doesn't have multiple bodies around him. And, and we were able to do that a little bit in the passing game. And then it, some of those runs popped, you know, we, we had – you know, we went into some 13 personnel or with the three tight ends, and, you know, the line did a good job of creating a couple of holes, and he hit them and, and was able to get out in space a little bit. Any concern that you're playing a team that, that many people consider the worst in the NFL, that your team, although you preach about next game up, that they could look past this? Yeah, I don't think you have to worry about that with, with this group. The, these, we already kind of went through that mm -hmm. early in the year, and and things didn't work out so well for us. And I don't think anybody looked past that. But I think our guys understand that it's irrelevant what the record is. Watch the tape. Get yourself prepared. 
we're going on the road. It's it's always hard in the NFL to go on the road and win a game. We we got to have huge focus on on what we're doing this week. How, how does like the Ryan Griffin story happen? I mean, he had been in the league, an okay player, and now he's emerged as somebody you've just given a contract to. You feel good about how, how does. Is that just right place at right time, or is there something you were able to tap into that maybe other people weren't early in his career? You know, I, you know, I think it was great that Joe, Joe got him here right before training camp. You know, we were, we knew we were in a situation where we were, we were a little depleted on the numbers, and we knew what was going to go on with Chris those first few games. So, being able to get a guy with experience, being on the street. You know, we had a, had a lot of good feedback as far as who he was as, as a guy and a worker, and there have been some guys that have been with him before. So getting him in the building and then really when we got him, it was it was almost – I didn't realize how good of a blocker he was in the run game. I didn't realize how good of a pass protector he was. Like, he was legit all-around tight end. And he was very smart. He, his knowledge of the game is, is unbelievable. And just dropping that guy into our locker room was – it was it was evident to us that he was one of the guys on, on the offensive side that really stepped to the forefront, you know, as a as a player and a leader. And now it just it works out. He just does his job, playing and play out, and the ball finds him, and and he's been making plays. I'm, I'm wondering. There's a story. I mean, obviously, all of baseball has gone analytics, especially the team in your backyard, the Yankees. They're a very analytic-driven organization. Uh, and football's moving toward that as well. And Jason Garrett, the Cowboy coach, said we don't use analytics during games. Do you guys use analytics at all? Are you do you lean heavily on them? And do they take part in your decision making during games? Yeah. So, so the way I always look at it is, it's another tool to use. I mean, obviously, the the information that that's available is unbelievable to be able to research the amount of things that we're able to research, and you know plug in situations and kind of see what's happened in the past. You know, we usually go into to a game with a specific plan as far as how we want to handle certain things and we're looking at how they how the opponent may do things. So, I mean, the end of the game situation, we we always try to to make sure that we're thinking through a lot of these things throughout the week of situations that come up and then try to learn from some of these situations that other teams find themselves in that if we find ourselves in, what will we do in those situations? Well, analytics would tell us, Adam, that you'll score 34 points again. What's the deal with the number 34? Three in a row. We, we, were, we were trying to score more, so <laughs> I mean, it just wasn't – it didn't work out. We we started getting some three and outs there in the in the fourth quarter. So, I mean, we're, we're just trying to put together good drives and stick it in the end zone as much as possible. We, we kind of – we shot ourselves in the foot a couple times there where we might have had a couple more opportunities and got called back on some penalties. Now, back to the analytics for a second. Do you find there's more information than there was even when you when you started with Miami or when you started in the league in general? Is it growing each probably, year? Pro probably starting in the league. I don't know if how much. I mean, really, the only thing that's increased since I started in Miami was just the games that have been played. So, I mean, there may have been some situations that have come up that aren't as don't happen as much as what you know you would normally see so it's just maybe some more information on some of those situations all right before we let you go i'm curious um just go back to the cowboys again so jerry jones pretty much called out his coaching staff uh and you know, your owner a couple of weeks ago you know gave you a vote of confidence and it certainly has been positive since then so i'm curious adam you don't do social media and that stuff but do you hear the noise like if an owner criticized you would that affect you well, i mean you for me, I always look at it as we ha we have a job to do, and we just keep doing that job and trying to do everything we can to to find a way to win the next week. You so know, out, outside you noise doesn't make you work harder per se. No, I mean you you're you're putting everything you have into it as it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean you're trying to find every which way you can to win a game. What are you most thankful for? Oh, he's this, la this last win. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, I know you'll be working, but have a nice Thanksgiving yes. and good luck against Cincinnati. All right, you guys too. All right. Thanks. That